Hey, I'm Keena Nisley, and this is The Life of the Land is in its Real Estate on Think Tech Hawaii. Today, we have a great show on to be or not to be a real estate agent. We know the real estate market is great right now, and everyone's thinking, wow, I should jump in and get my license. So today I have Anthony Pace from Keller Williams, Honolulu, to share with us, should you be a real estate agent? Hi, Tony. So welcome to the show. Hi, Kena. Thanks for having, having me on. Yeah, it's great to have you. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, I got licensed in uh, 1985, and uh, it was about a year after I had seen a program on TV about uh, buy real estate, no money down. Uh, and I was like, oh, I, I, see fa I see real estate being a fascinating way to create wealth. And uh, I had gone out and bought a couple of properties with a friend of mine, no money now, as a matter of fact. And um, I just had such a love for real estate that I, talk, I started talking about it to everybody. Um, people had asked me about, you know, am I licensed? Do I have a car? And I said, no. I said, well, maybe it's a good time for me to get in. So I got my license in 85. I uh, got my broker's license in 87. And I've been in the business ever since then. And this is all I've done for the past 35, coming up on 36 years. So, wow. So what did you do before real estate? Um, I was a criminal investigator for the Navy out of Barbers Point, which is now part of Kalaloa. Wow. All right. Great. So let's talk about what, what is it to be a real estate agent? Is, do we just get to go show pretty houses all day? No. Um, you know, there's a lot of education involved. Um, and it's, it's knowing the market, it's, it's providing a great service to your client, you know, finding out the wants and needs of your client, whether they're, whether they're a buyer, investor, you know, a homeowner or a seller. And, um, and just kind of like going from there. So you talk about knowing the market. So how do you get to know your market? Cause obviously if you're someone who's just getting into the business, do you automatically know the market? Well, you know, the data in our system goes back probably about a good 15 to 20 years. And so you can research, you know, any part of the market that you want to be engaged in. So if you're going to want to work the Waikiki market, it would be good to study that over the last 20 years to find out the peaks and, and the valleys, the, the highest appreciation, the lowest appreciation, what buildings have low maintenance speed, what buildings have you know, um, higher maintenance fees, which ones you can do as a condo tell, they can for short-term rentals, or if you want to specialize in Makiki, you want to go to the Makiki market. So I think in the very beginning, everybody wants to go ahead and, you know, know everything there is about the real estate as far as I know why, but you can't do that. I remember like my first year in real estate, my first transaction was out in uh, Makaha, uh, $55,000 purchase. But, you know, back then, uh, I was willing to go to Makaha for $55,000 sale, right? But I wouldn't be able to do that now because, I, you know, you have to specialize a little bit more. So I think you kind of have to pick out a market, study it, see where the highest sales are, the number of turnover, and then you can basically figure out what your income could be if you can tap 5 or 10% of that market. Wow. Okay. So you have been in a number of years because I'm also an agent, but I'm on year four. So I have been lucky enough to only experience a growth uh, over, over the past three years that I've been, you know, really active in, in real estate. Um, but you have definitely been in a lot longer. So what have you seen in the ups and downs and the shifts? What kind of, what have you experienced? Well, in an up market, you kind of see uh, an increase of people getting their real estate license. Uh, because it doesn't really take that much to sell a property. Um, however, as you're experiencing now in the market, you're working with buyers that they're getting beat out on multiple offers. You know, you may be representing a buyer that's competing with 40 other people. Uh, they get kind of burnt out. So you have to be able to advise them, you know, a good offer to structure. Like how long are they going to be here for? You know, there's people coming in that maybe only be on the island for a couple of years and it doesn't make it doesn't make any sense for them to buy at the moment or versus renting. Okay. Um, so the more knowledge you have, the better you can service your client. Um, on a downside of the cycle, 
it's a little bit more difficult to make sales because there are less buyers, less sellers going around, and they tend to gravitate towards the more experienced agent that can get them through a difficult market. So, you know, in an up market, you can take a property that sold for 800,000 three months ago and price a new listing and say maybe 825, easy peasy, right? But uh, now you're in a down market and the price that a property that sold eight hundred thousand dollars three months ago you may not, may only be may only be worth seven seventy five or maybe even a little bit less. So you always have to get a jump and be ahead of the market because otherwise you're behind the market. And then you see and you see less and you see more and more people getting out of the market in a down cycle because they just can't make a living. So everyone talks about you know the crash in two thousand eight. What how did you ride that out? Um, the crash in 2008, it depends on where, it depends on where you work at, right? The, cra the, the, the crash in 2008 really affected mostly the west side. And I want to say from, say, Cunia all the way out to the Makaha side. Because the way that the real estate cycle goes in Hawaii is that the central business district goes up in price first. And then it kind of spreads out to all the other areas of the island. And so normally the Makaha side is the last, last place to experience great growth appreciation, but it's also the first one to come down. So it's in the opposite effect, right? So it's the first, it's the last to go up, the first to come down. So I specialize in town. You know, people in town, they tend to um, not over leverage their properties. So we didn't see a lot of short sales. We saw people that had the ability to hold on. There was a lot of less, you know, there were less deals to go around, but I had been in the business at that point, you know, 25, 25 years. And so uh, I had good market knowledge. I could tell clients, you know, where to, where to price at. Um, if they were selling, if they were buying, I could kind of tell them this, this building, you know, has appreciated more over the past 10 years than maybe the property next door for various reasons. So you kind of want to know all that. You, you want to do all that research. So in getting into business, like right now, it's good if you're not out there looking at property on a daily basis in the area that you want to be in or researching, you're not going to, you're not going to last that long. Oh. So, okay. So what changes over all the years that you've been in real estate have you seen? Technology has made a big impact in our business. Um, you know, we used to we used to operate on proprietary information. Where um, when I came, when I when I got in the, in the market, there was no such thing as the internet. So, you know, if you wanted to take a look at a property, there was basically every other week you had an MLS book, which it looked like a phone book. It had every single listing that was on the market, but it wasn't updated for the following month. So you would call on properties that were already in escrow um, you know and then everything became online and then you had companies come in that now take the data and then push it out to you know Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com so if you're not keeping up if you know two things one if you're not keeping up with the technology you're going to lose your clientele to the technology but those people may be using technology but they're still using a realtor so some of the people that I've worked with, you know, especially on the mainland, they've gone out and researched properties on their own through Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com. And when they find the right one, they'll call me about it. And I can tell them all the nuances about the property in the neighborhood. So I think technology has changed a lot in a good way, but for the people that don't want to embrace it, you know, they can't keep up with it and end up being on the market. Oh yes, so definitely. Um, so what would you advise someone to get into real estate right now? Absolutely. I mean, I came into the market in um, 1985. It was a little bit of a difficult market. It was, you know, 12% interest rates, you know, a three bedroom, two bath, while the prices were low at, you know, I bought my first property at 12.5%, $115,000. My mortgage payment was, was 12 30 you know, fast forward, you know, 20 years later, you know, I bought a property for 200. My mortgage payment was like a thousand. Fast forward to today, you know, I could buy something for 400, have a mortgage payment less than what it was back in 1985. So we've seen a lot of changes over the market and I've made a living through every single cycle. So it just depends on 
on your determination and your drive and can you outlast your competition? Oh, yes, um, it definitely is. It's tenacity and, and a lot of work. But um, so what makes a successful agent? What have you seen over the years for people that have been successful? Knowledge. You know, knowledge is first and foremost, um, the ability to communicate effectively with your client and make them realize that you really have their best interest in, in hand and heart and that you're not just looking at them as a paycheck. Because you end up, because you tend to go the extra mile for people when you really care about them and you give them the right advice. Like you forget about how much you're gonna make on a commission and think about, is it a good, is this property a good fit for them? Is it a good time for them to buy? Where do you see the market going? Are they better off waiting until the rates come lower? Prices come down? So every situation is a little bit different. I mean, I've had clients that have, you know, pursued properties. I just told them it's not a good fit for you. Don't work with the seller. And they were pretty substantial commissions, but dealing some, you know, pretty high end luxury stuff. But, you know, they respect me for that. And they'll come back to me, you know, time and time again. And I'm not a good fit for everybody, every buyer, every seller, every client that's come across my desk. Um, but I know what I'm capable of doing and how I can connect with my people and keep them engaged. So yes, yeah, so it is, I mean, I have found in the years I've been in, you know, very short years, it, it is very relationship based. Absolutely. And I, I tell my clients, there's one thing you're approved for and there's another thing of what you can afford. Right. Um, so I, you know, we, you do have to watch out for them because that, that can be very different um, in what the lender says and really, you know, what do you want to spend? So is it free to be a real estate agent? It's not free. It's definitely a low barrier to entry. Um, you know, I never went to college, so I don't have a college education. I did go to back to school later just because I didn't need a degree or I didn't, you know, I didn't need to pass a test or to pass a class. But I think in today's day and age, it's probably, you know, Five or six hundred dollars, maybe a little bit more, to take the real estate class. Maybe a couple hundred dollars for the exam, depending on how many times you pass it or fail it, I should say. Um, and if you're going to be joining the board, National Association of Realtors with MLS fees, you're probably looking at about you know twelve hundred dollars. So I want to say, if you're interested in getting into the game or in the business, is that it's at least two thousand dollars that you're going to have to spend up front to get in. So that's just to get licensed and that's get, get started. Licensed. That's not, you know, your, your business card, your marketing, getting a website, you can decide to get one. So it's, it becomes expensive. Yes, so it does. So what is, I know everybody doesn't make it, and I'm sure you have seen, I mean, I've seen people come and go in, in my four years. I'm sure you have seen a lot of people come and go. Um, over the years. So what, what is the biggest cause of failure? Well, real estate is, it, it's, it's, uh, it could be, it can be a difficult business, right? Like you, like you may not, you know, you may not look, I have a passion for real estate. I have since I bought my first two properties and I love real estate and I'll probably work until I can't work any longer, but this is it. When I made a commitment in 1985 to get my real estate license, this was the only path I saw for the rest of my life. Now, 1985, 1986, those weren't very good years for me. Um, and I'm gonna tell you, like, I, I don't wanna say I was starving, but you know, times were hard, but I just persevered because I just didn't wanna have to go out and get a regular job. And you know, the more time, the more energy, the more effort you put into this, this business, the more money you can make. So really, the only limitations in this business are the ones that you put on yourself. Yeah. So I will say the only the only pitfall I see um, is that it, it, it you have to work hard. I work still work very long hours, as do you, because I'm usually bothering you. Um, but what are the other pitfalls that you see besides the long hours? Um, you know, change in business. You know, the market changes. You know, people are used to doing business a certain way and all of a sudden technology comes in and you can't, you know, you can't adapt to it. Um, not enough, not enough clients want to do business with you. So you're always struggling for the next deal. Uh, and at some point in time, I mean, and you can't do this on a part-time basis. 
You know, I mean, if this is going to be, you know, how you're going to make a living, it has to be your career. Not like I'm going to go do two or three days, two or three deals a year and expect to make a good living. So it's, and you got to be self-motivated. You got to wake up in the morning. You got to do all the things that you need to do to prospect, to take care of your clients. And then you got to be highly motivated and self-motivated. Definitely. Um, I totally agree with that. It is definitely every day getting up, asking yourself, what am I going to do today to generate money or generate, do with my, take care of my clients? What am I going to do today? Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but it does think too, it's, it's a stressful business, right? You, there is, you really don't have that much control, right? Like you go out and you sell a property, whether you represent the buyer or the seller. And after that, it's really up to the buyer and the seller to make the transaction happen. And then you have escrow, then you have mortgages, you have title issues, you have survey issues, pest control issues. There's like anywhere along the way, that deal can just fall apart. And some people just, you know, they, they can't handle that. Yes. And when a deal falls apart, that means you don't get paid. Right. Um, but, and I still have... I don't leave. I know you don't either. I don't leave my clients at, at the at the closing table. Like I don't walk away. I continue to um, work with them. They are your clients for life, and you are the one they call when, hey, my toilet just overflowed. Do you have a plumber? Do you, you know I can't get into my garage? Do you remember what the code is? You're the one that's still there. Yeah, so, sure. yeah. And I mean, I know you're the same way. You are you are with your. They're your clients forever. Yeah, um, and I think more so. I think more so. You know, more so with COVID happening is that um, I became very engaged with my clients. Um, I did, you know, Zoom calls or, or FaceTime with them because, you know, you really couldn't meet them face to face. I believe in technology to a certain extent, but I don't like text messaging. I, I, I always, anytime there was an issue or I needed something or something needed to be done, I always made a phone call and they appreciated that. And so I've carried that you know, for the last, you know, seven or eight months since, you know, COVID happened. Yeah. Um, and I think my business had increased, you know, this past year and has just rolled right into 2021. Yeah. So yes, the market has um, stayed very good. And we've stayed very busy. So we've kind of talked about the bad stuff, but what do you love about being a real estate agent? Oh, I love seeing people getting the keys to their home. You know, like their, their, their face light up when they find something and they get to move in. Um, it, it's, all, it's really all about the client, you know? It's really all about that. It's like, see, I like to see people with happy endings. Yeah, it is. I, I, I feel that way too. It just, you know, we, we talked about it yesterday. It's like, it's like a win. It just feels like you've won. You've, you've made their dreams come true and, and you're there to help them. So especially if it's a difficult, you know, especially if it's a difficult transaction, because you've had some of those that you even you have called me on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and to me, you know, I feel like each transaction is definitely different. And it's a little bit of, of a game, um, you know, to see, you know, see how many. How many items or issues that you can that you can handle and then you realize like, wow, like I'm really worth, you know, it's like. This is a business that the longer you're in it, the more value you, you bring to the table. Yeah. And so I think like once you get going, you have longevity and you do a good job, like this, there's no reason for you to get out of the business until you just, it's time to retire. Yeah. And it, it does feel good even when, you know, you get through your J1 inspection. It's a time to celebrate. You, you, that's a huge obstacle. Yeah. Um, so you got to celebrate it. And I mean, we, we kind of talk about how hard it is. I talk about the long hours we work. But it, it is a great career, and if you love people especially. So, um, yeah. So was the boom that we saw during COVID um, what you expected? No, I don't think anybody expected it. I think most people had assumed that the, the bottom would just fall out of the market and just keep tanking. And, you know, we definitely saw a lull in sales when... COVID first happened, and, you know, everything was shut down. But what happened was that, you know, people wanted to go out and they want to buy something. They, they had, they still have real estate needs. And it just happens that 
inventory got, got short, um, it decreased. You've had a lot of people coming from the mainland say, hey, I don't want to be in LA. If I'm going to have to quarantine, I want to be in Hawaii. And so we had a lot of mainland people come out here too. So we've had, you know, some of the biggest sales in the last, you know, probably five or six years have happened, have happened during COVID. Oh, yeah, it was. I remember sitting in a, uh, with Colette in a shift meeting because we were anticipating a big shift of the market downward. And, right. and it was a talk on how are you going to keep your clients engaged? How are you going to make it through the shift? And then COVID hit and I, I too thought we were just going to plummet and it every day. It was just like, okay, how can I reach out to my clients today? Yeah. How can I talk to them today? You know, sending handwritten notes just to keep everybody's spirits up and make it through. We didn't know how long. And so I, I didn't expect this either. So where do you think the market is headed? Do you think we're going to keep this pace up? Or what do you think? It's Again, we don't have a crystal ball, so you can't hold us to any of this, but what do you think? I think as long as, I think as, long as rates stay, stay where they're at, because that has definitely fueled the market in a, in a big way, because you know people that couldn't afford any more than say like a few hundred thousand dollars can now afford like double what they could have you know, a couple of years ago. So I think as long as interest rates you know, stay where they're at, the market will continue the way it's at. And as long as the world um, has some sort of an order to it, it looks like they were coming out of COVID with the vaccines, um, travel, you know, is happening again. Uh, I, I think it'll be a good, good market for, you know, a few years to come still. You know, if, if you may see a little bit of a shift to where there are not multiple offers, you know, like there have been, um, but I think it'll be a good market for the next few years. Oh, all right. So we do have a viewer question. Um, and she says that everyone knows a realtor. One or two or even three even have realtors as family members. How do you choose one realtor over another without creating bad feelings amongst your circle of friends? <laughs> um, so I recently, I'm working with a client now that has uh, a couple of other realtor friends and we've all been friends together for probably like the last 20 years. Uh, and everybody has serviced their real estate needs at some point in time, but they had a need, a different, you know, they had a specific property that maybe wasn't a good fit for the other two realtors and so they came to me. And I don't think there was any hard feelings with the other people, um, at least that's not what I've been told. But you have to make the choice as what's good for you as the client, as the buyer, as the seller. And that's kind of how you have to look out for yourself. And you have to pick the agents that's going to have your best interest, whether it's a relative or not a relative or a friend or not a friend. So, yeah. So with that, I mean, what, what, what should people look for in a real estate agent? Somebody that has their best interest at heart. Someone that's gonna, you know, be there with their sleeves rolled up, you know, and do whatever it takes to get you the house or to sell the house that you want. Um, and no hard feelings between the two of you, right? Because you, you know, you can part ways with your with your realtor at any given time in a transaction, you know. If you're working with one of your best friends or a good relative and something goes, you know, south you know, can you maintain that, that familiar or that, that friendship, you know, going forward? All right. Well, we hope we answered the viewer's question. Um, let's touch on one more thing that you mentioned earlier about education. So as a real estate agent, are you one and done? You take the test and, and boom, you never have to look back? No, absolutely not. Well, first off, there's requirements. Every two years, you have to take a number of classes. I always try to exceed the number of credits I have to take because I like learning. I'm very learning based. I like to study what's happening on the mainland because a lot of mainland trends follow Hawaii. Um, like the last downturn in 2000 that began in like 2006, 2007, that was the peak of the market. Hawaii did not suffer like it did on the mainland. The west side took a bit of a dip, but not like it did on the mainland. So you always kind of want to be prepared to see what the trends are on the mainland. Because, you know, Hawaii's out where, you know, 
3,000 miles away from the mainland, we always, we always lag, we always yeah. lag. So we always have to be a little different. So yes, there is a lot of education. I know there's a lot of options to get different certifications. So do you recommend that agents, when they come in, start working on those different certifications? Do they make a difference? I think if you're gonna go into commercial, you kind of wanna go for CCIM, which is almost like the college of equivalent of you know, commercial real estate. Um, there's the GRI classes, there's the CRS classes. There are a number of designation classes that you can take if you want to specialize working with say, you know, the elderly or, you know, military. There's all kinds of designations that you can get. And even if you don't want the, de the, the designation, just the fact that you're learning more and more about engaging with different types of clients throughout the market, whether you work with them or not, is always a good thing because you maybe answer some you maybe didn't answer someone's questions better than someone else can. And that's the whole thing. You want to be of service contribution. You want to be educated so you can you want to be well rounded. Yes. All right. Well that is the end of our show and thank you so much. That was awesome okay. information. And if you are interested in becoming a real estate agent or you'd like more information about becoming a real estate agent, you can reach out to me. You can reach out to Tony. We're both at Keller Williams. We both would be happy to answer your questions. And I will see you all in a couple of weeks and we will have a lender on to talk about where are the rates going and, you know, what does, you know, what's the Federal Reserve have in store for us coming up? All right. Again, thank you, Tony. Thanks thank for joining you. us. Thank you. My pleasure. And thank you for um, watching. The life of the land is in its real estate. Thank you. Think Tech Hawaii. And I will see you all in a couple of weeks.